In the previous video, I showed you the best practice way to attach an on-click listener to recycler view list items so that you can detect clicks and then take some kind of action. If you're not sure what that video is or you didn't watch that video and you want to watch that video, there's going to be a link in the top right here of the screen. It's going to be a little card and also there'll be a link in the description of this video. A lot of you asked for uh, another video that should come after this one where I show you how to attach objects to bundles when navigating to a new activity. So that's what uh, that's what this video is going to be for. That's what I'm going to show you how to do here. In Android, when you want to send data from one activity to another, the easiest and most common way is to use intent extras. At the end of the last video, you might remember me calling it a bundle. And actually, I think I just said that at the beginning of this video. Extras are a form of bundle. So just, just wanted to kind of clarify that. It's a data structure that you can attach objects to. The bundle can then be attached to an intent, and that's what's used to navigate to the new activity. So you create a bundle, you attach an object to that bundle, and then you attach the bundle to the intent. So remember, this is an intent down here, and then you navigate to the new activity. That bundle will then be available to the new activity. So I can get access to the bundle by writing get intent, dot get whatever extras so I can have all these different data structures basically so that's that's how you pass the data to the new activity now before I try and attach a note object to a bundle I want to talk about a couple of caveats not all objects can be attached to bundles and not all objects should be attached to bundles for example all custom data classes just like the note class that I built in this project so if we go into our models package just like this this is considered a custom data class this classes like this cannot be attached to a bundle by default. They must be declared as parcelable. So I'll spell that out for you so you know what it is. Parcel, parcelable. They must be made parcelable so that they can be attached to a bundle. Don't worry if you have no idea what that means. I'm going to be talking about that in detail later in this video. So the first point I just talked about was not all objects can be attached to bundles. Not all objects by default anyway. There's also some objects that you should not attach to bundles. So examples of objects that you shouldn't attach to bundles is very large data sets. An example of a very large data set might be an array list that's very large. So uh, I would never, for example, I would never go intent dot put, uh, put uh, parsable array list extra. I would never attach, say, the notes, the notes array list. Not if it had a lot of entries. Small lists are okay, but it's not a good idea to add anything with like, I don't know, a good rule of thumb is I generally probably wouldn't attach anything with more than 50 entries to a bundle. And you know that in this app right now, we currently have, I think, a thousand entries. So definitely don't attach any large lists to bundles. It's not good for performance. What will end up probably happening is you'll get out of memory errors or something like that. You'll probably get an error and your app will crash. All right, so now that I have the technicalities out of the way, let's start implementing this. So I want to attach a note object to our intent. Basically what I wanna do is I wanna go put extra selected note, and then I wanna pass mnotes.getPosition. What that's gonna do is it's gonna get the position of the note that I selected. It's going to attach that note object to an extra, and the key to that bundle extra is gonna be selected note. This is a key. This is just a key value pair. The key is selected note, and then the value is the note. So it's giving me a warning here saying that a note object can't be attached to a bundle. So now I'm going to work on resolving that. So how we do that is I go into the note class, and we need to implement parcelable. So I'm implementing parcelable. Parcelable. Now all I want to do is click Alt Enter on here, go implement methods, and insert all the methods. If you scroll up to the top, there's still some more that you need to implement. So I'm clicking on the red underline, going add parcelable implementation. And that's it. That's all there is to adding a parcelable implementation. Now you're probably wondering, well, what the hell is this parcelable thing? It seems really easy. Why wouldn't Android just make everything parcelable by default? A parcelable implementation is a way to package objects. So all it does is it defines a way to package objects. And once this way to package objects is defined, I can, act, I can add those objects to a bundle. So now you'll find that in notes list activity, that error goes away. It's because I've specified a way to package this custom data class. So now it can be added to a bundle and attached to an extra, whatever. I can, I can package it in a way that Android understands. So now that we have that attached, I'm gonna go into node activity. 
I'm going to get that note. So note note equals, uh, oops, get intent, get parsable extra is the one that I want. And I want to reference the key, so selected note. And that's going to retrieve my note. Uh, of course, it's always a good idea to make sure there's actually something attached because if I didn't attach a note, so you know, say I commented this out, I ran the app, if I just had this, the app would crash because it would look for that parsable extra, it wouldn't be there and it would crash, it would cause a null pointer exception. So what you want to do is, I'm going to comment this back in, if get intent dot has extra, and then I can reference the key selected note, then we want to retrieve that note. So I'm performing a check, making sure that the extra exists. And if it does exist, then I'm getting that note object. So I'm going to type log D just to show you that it's working. Whoops, I forgot to add a tag. So I'm going to write type log T up here. And I'm going to print that note object to the log. So note dot to string. Now I'm going to run it and we can take a look at that note object being passed through the bundle to the new activity. The filter on show only selected application, get the app open here, clicking on a note. And if we look at the log, we can see the on create method is called in note activity. It's saying the title is note number three, which is the one that I clicked. There's the content, there's the timestamp. Everything is working as we expect. Also note that this video is part of actually an entire course that I have on my website. It's a free course and it's meant for beginners. It's called SQLite for Beginners 2019, and it shows you how to get started building your very first Android app and basically everything that goes along with that. It teaches you how to use the local SQLite database that's on every Android device when you install an app and kind of how to build your first app, like I just said. If you want to get the course, all you need to do is go to codingwithmitch.com and on the home page, if you want to scroll down, you can click the beginner section and that'll take you to a link to that course right there. Or you can click on the side here, it says SQLite for beginners, or you can go to the courses section. Uh, once that loads, you can see SQLite for beginners 2019. You can click that and just click on register. That's going to let you start watching the course right away. There's, uh, there's no fee, there's nothing that you need to do. All you need to do is create an account and register. Um, I didn't go through the account creation process, but that's also very easy. So if you wanted to create an account, you would just go to uh, the login button up here, go to register, register an account, and then watch the course. Pretty straightforward, no cost involved, and that'll help you get started building your first Android app.